Okay, awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, uh, shall I start? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You are currently playing on a European tour. How is it going? Uh, tour is going really well. Um, it seems like every show that we've been playing here uh, has been getting like better and better. Okay. Uh, just uh, also just like every band that's on the tour, like Kubikon counterparts, um, we've been friends with them since for a while now. So it's like seeing our friends again on tour. So that's always a cool vibe. Um, and then the pale face guys are super awesome and then super like legit. So it's, it's been a good, good time. Okay. Uh, you are happy so far. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you were in Spain uh, the last October with Lion Heart, with Terror, and Get the Shot. Do you have good memories of those days? Yeah, that sh that show specifically um, was probably one of the best for us. Uh, oh, in Barcelona was, or Madrid? Uh, Barcelona. 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 I, I live yeah. uh, in Barcelona. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah. Okay, no, I, uh, I remember was in Rathmatath Club. Yeah. Yeah, and it was funny because we were um, kind of like freaking out because doors were at six and we played at six fifteen, and we we're yes. like, we're gonna play to like it, that people. day. <laughs> it, it was a a party day in Spain. There no nobody works that day. I remember because of oh, that okay. you can play at at that time. <laughs> gotcha. Um, no, but yeah, that was one of the best shows, and yeah, I got to. Uh, say things in Spanish and people knew what I what I was saying so that was awesome okay what lesson have you learned with this experience of touring with terror get the shot lion heart um I think since we're like the opening band and then those guys are like you know pretty much made in Europe it's for us it's like okay we got to work a little bit harder um okay. to win over the crowd um you know get out there, like give them like a great show. It's so to where like maybe one day, like, you know, five, 10 years from now, when we tour Europe as a headliner, people, yeah. all those people will remember that and come back. It's like that type of thing. Yeah. It's a, a way to, to increase your, your fan base in, in Europe. And as you told in 10 years, maybe I hope you can, you can do it as a headliner, not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, recently, you have published a new single called "Tour from Your Silhouette." Are you receiving mm -hmm. lots of positive feedback from from your fans? Yeah. Um, you know, surprisingly, it's been all good. Like, there hasn't really been a, the people being like, "Oh, this shit sucks," <laughs> or anything. <laughs> um, which you know, it's never a bad thing, but it's like. I've only heard good things and I'm kind of, uh, that's awesome. Um, but it's to me personally, it's just funny because like that song compared to the rest of the album is like, it's like a, like that song's like an A, like, but like, I feel like the other songs that are going to be in the album are like A plus plus. Like if you guys like this song, like I can't, I can't wait for you guys to hear the rest. Okay. I, for me, it's a, a good song. I, I really like and congratulate you about it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> In that song, um, Emma said, uh, say goodbye and watch me fall. I would rather feel everything than nothing at all. My weakness is you, parasite. Uh, mm -hmm. Emma showed uh, her feelings and negative thoughts in his lyrics. Do you feel that the play music for you is uh, as a ther therapy? Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, I think at least for like an artist or a musician in general, you know, making music is like a form of, ex of escape. And it's like, you know, like that song specifically, she wrote it about like a experience she had that kind of like, you know, messed with her brain and her heart. So like, you know, she was feeling all of that. So she had to write it all out. And now like, you know, became He's like visiting a of... true history about his her life. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. So, it, it, you know, I think for every artist and musician, you know, making music is a form of therapy. Okay. 
Your debut album, uh, Fragments or a Bitter Memory, received very good reviews. Do you feel that you are a band respected by the media? I think so, um, for the most part. Um, you know, we have a great team behind us and we have, um, you know, people, I think, who, I think people who listen to us, um, whether they're in the media or whether they're just, you know, fans, they know that like what we're like making is like, you know, coming from a real place. It's not just, you know, uh, you know, silly stuff, I guess, <laughs> to be, <laughs> to be put in a nicer way, but it's like, you know, this is, this is what we want to do as a career. So we're going to give it everything we got. And it seems like, you know, people are recognizing that. Okay. Uh, recently, the famous singer Ed Sheeran say, said this, uh, what do you need? Why do you need to read a review? Listen to it. It's freely available. Make it your own mind. I will never read an album review and go. I'm not going to listen to that now. What is your opinion about this Ed Sheeran claims? Do you think music critics are useful in the era of Spotify? Mm, I, I like what he said, because a lot of the time, if I read something about an album, like whether it be like, oh, this is the best thing that has come out and whatever, or like, oh, this is bad. Either way, I'm going to listen to it because I'm just like, okay, I need to know if this is actually true type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess in a way, uh, they're important to the fact to like maybe giving that band or artist more like, a, um, like a bigger platform. So people at least know that they're out there, but as far as like, you know, curating an opinion about if the music's good or not, I think as a listener, you should, you know, do it yourself, listen to it and make your own opinion on certain things. Yeah. But at the same time, I, um a reviewer is a uh, people uh, without any uh, without a lot of experience uh, hearing music no i i think mm -hmm. that is a uh, as a a cooker that uh, recommend you uh, some dish or some meat no or or something like this i think mm -hmm. that is a good um part in in the industry in musical industry but i respect Ed Sheeran claims and as you told uh, it's very easy to you play your play the song and discover the music for yourself no i yeah I understand. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> okay many bands have used breakdowns in recent years i see that many of them continue to use it do you think that the breakdown still has a long way to go in music? Um, hmm. I think so. I mean, like personally for me, like a lot of, every, at least everyone in Dying Wish comes from a hardcore background and, you know, breakdowns have always been like, you know, the part in hardcore music. Um, but you know, as far as metalcore music goes, uh, I think, you know, a lot of like the technical, more technical bands that like make breakdowns almost like into like, you know, a science where it's like more about, you know, hearing the craziest time signature rather than like being in the crowd moving or like moshing yeah. to it. Um, I think there, there's a distinct difference, but I think it's also like, you know, as far as just music goes, like, in a way that's pretty cool you know you can make like a breakdown into like some crazy like science experiment um whether it's and then it comes from like we're us like we're hardcore kids we're just there to mosh and shit like that <laughs> <laughs> okay and what is your favorite breakdown of all of time wow um <laughs> hmm. if your background are hardcore music Maybe one of terror breakdown or sick of it all or terror has a lot of good ones. Um, I'm gonna say so. My favorite band's a hundred demons, um, and I'll probably say the song suffer. Suffer is suffer. Yeah, has okay. I, least... I never hear it. No, yeah, look them up. They they're like so. I have guitar picks that say listen to a hundred demons on it. Because like, 
they're obviously they're my favorite band but at the same time it's like people like you know they know hate free they know terror they know like mad ball but like 100 <laughs> demons is like 100 demons is up there like they have to be at least okay. in my opinion and which which is your favorite dying wish breakdown Ooh. what song um damn i honestly my favorite now is from like a new song that we have yes um but since we can't talk about that yet uh on fragments probably my favorite breakdown is the one in now you'll rot um okay it's like right it's like right in the middle um where like the bass comes in and then we all come back in and it goes tick -tick 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 -tick. <laughs> that's my favorite Fa every time we play it live i'm just like okay sick that's my favorite part okay 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 finally i i will ask you about a, a social question uh, you are a multicultural band and mm. that fights against racism you live in a polarized country where donald trump led policies against immigration Now, with the Biden administration, the BIPOC have improved their lives. Do you feel that uh, BIPOC have more social rights now? Um, it's weird. So, like, yes and no. I think, obviously, Donald Trump messed up a lot of things for us. Um, and then Biden came in and, you know, started to change a few things, you know. Um, it's almost kind of like a like a band-aid over the problem i think at least in our community at home in portland um a lot of those underlying like systems and underlying problems that like go through like different races that live there are kind of still there but at the same time our community is like stronger than ever to where it's like you know we protect stronger ourselves. than ever yeah we protect you said that your community is stronger than ever okay yeah in my opinion i think so are you from yeah. mexico uh, you said me no i was born in oregon but my parents um are from mexico my dad's from uh okay. Nayarit, okay. and then my mom's from mexico city okay but uh, did you born in portland yes yeah okay 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 um i think my point of view is that uh is continuing in the same situation but i i, I see from spain no and mm -hmm. uh, i feel that uh, usa now is very polarized um over the world is the same problem but uh, mm, maybe the 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 big problem it will be when if donald trump uh, come back no <laughs> yeah yeah they they're saying they're trying to say that he might come back but i don't know at this point it's just like like every political party is mostly there to look out for themselves and to look out you know how to get the most money so in my opinion i think as far as like communities and people i think that's where you know the strength of like you know we should protect ourselves Don't worry about whatever the yeah. fuck's going on. We need to make sure everything here that is like we're like point of view facing at all times is okay. And then hopefully the rest of the you know problems will figure yeah, themselves out. The same out. message that hardcore punk uh, shared with uh, the audience, no? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Pedro. For me, it's a great pleasure talk with with you. I hope that in the future you come back to to Barcelona and or, or Madrid and I mm -hmm. can see you again, okay? Yeah, of course, man. Yeah, last time was super fun. <laughs> Thank you for you for for the manager as well and for all all, all of the band and I hope that the tour U European tour uh going well, okay? Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro.